So you've been around Easton for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, how long so. have you been in Easton? I've been here for uh, 30 years, but I grew up in Stoughton before that. So okay. I, I didn't really go that far. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So um, as far as this event here today, we're expecting a nice crowd. Yes, yep. And people come from all over for this event. So. Yeah. One of the artists is from Cumberland, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. Jerry. Yeah. In the back corner, he's all excited about. I mean, he, he does some really. He does some acrylic. He does some oil. Yeah. He does some water paintings. Um, what's interesting about art, and since you've done some art yourself, um, it's it's like. In a couple of them, um, we were talking, um, and piles out there. There's a woman by the name of Pile. She does um, a lot of her artwork is from her mind. Yeah. So when you see art, you're actually seeing through a person's eyes, their visual, their mind. And there are, a lot of them are just allowing their expression yeah. to come out on canvas or on paper. Uh, and I find that very interesting because everyone in this world has a talent. Right. And they're letting us, they're sharing their talent with us through their art. Right. So it's, it's like a musician. Yeah. Sharing their talent through music. Well, there's a teacher at the middle school. Her name's Kathy Hayes. And my mm. daughter had her years back. And that was one of the first years they were trying out three-dimensional artwork. Oh. And so I went in and talked with her just casually. And the work that was in her classroom was amazing. These were seventh and eighth graders. And the biggest challenge that she had when kids started is that they want to do it right. So we take little kids that are really creative yeah. and then we try to like force them to conform to everything and then they are looking for the right way and the wrong way to do things. And so because it was three-dimensional art, like they took um, you know, plastics and contorted them so they almost looked like blown glass. Yep. But there wasn't a here's what it's supposed to look like. Yep. And it gave the kids so much anxiety to start off with because they couldn't tell whose was the best, what it was supposed to look like, and then to watch the kids through the, through the whole uh, period of you know, the semester to see how they looked at it and approached it at the end and realized like every single one of them was the best. If you looked at all that artwork, you would say, that's the best, that's the best. And I just thought in addition to being able to be creative and produce beautiful artwork, the message that that sent to kids is like, oh. you don't have to draw the vase of flowers so it looks exactly like the vase of flowers. You can, you know, like like Kraken, yeah. use bicycle yeah. chains, use right. all these other imaginative right. things. I want to give a shout out to the All Rames High School Art Program. Yes. I was amazed. Uh, I was watching ECAT a couple of weeks ago and they had last year's seniors and juniors and presenting their art at their, their show at all of Rames, the end of the year show, yeah. and they were awarding the seniors. Um, they're incredible. They are. They really are. And, and the, the art program is, it, it was outstanding. It was outstanding. And I think it's wonderful that we have an art program because so many of those, uh, those things are secondary to education now and it's really really important to have you know creativity and arts and yeah. music and and culture in the schools because that really um, it, it just connects everything I think the quality yes it was it was just it was mind-blowing yeah and I was watching it on TV I can't right. imagine being in person to see that stuff what's your favorite color my favorite color is purple why I don't know I've just always liked purple I feel like it's like a healing color okay <laughs> my daughter's favorite color is purple. Yeah. What's your favorite color? Good question. <laughs> I never knew my favorite color until I went to the dry cleaners one day and I dropped off a pile of shirts and the dry cleaner over the years has gotten to know me. She said, you know, she goes, your favorite color is blue. I said, well, why do you say that? She says, every shirt you have has blue in it. <laughs> I said, really? Huh? True. She said, you also drive a blue car. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so, my color is blue. That, it, That's interesting. Yeah, it's not. I had the dry clean to tell me that. Yep. I never realized it. So. I I like blue also. But. I like purple. I like yellow. <laughs> I mean, they're all great colors. Right. But everybody's got their color, I guess. Yeah. yeah. 
So what do you think of the cultural district and, and the, uh, the other work that we do, like the concerts? And I, I think it's wonderful. I've been, I've been working, I've been volunteering at ECAT since um, last August. Yeah. And um, I think it's awesome, the, the amount yeah. of effort. And I think what, um, I think some people understand that the effort that goes into putting these things together and the amount of work volunteers play. Yeah. Um, and it's just amazing. And the quality, um, yeah. the, the bands we had, right. we had last uh, fall for the end of summer concert yeah. was crazy, over the top. It really right? was. And it was staged at the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall. Yeah. Um, and the people that came out were, were great. Yeah. Um, and then all the other summer concerts. Right. You can't. Well, there's not a lot of cultural districts in the state, and it's really hard to be designated as a cultural district. You have to go through a lot of hoops. Um, Carolyn Cole, God bless her soul, yeah. uh, she is responsible for all of this, and we are thinking of her all day. Yeah. I keep seeing different things, and I'm like, oh, Carolyn would love this. Carolyn would love this. She would be so proud. And so she was the one who really pushed to get us designated as a district. Yeah. And, you know, at first I always supported it because I support the arts, but I didn't really understand the bigger picture of it. So when you connect, you know, arts and culture and businesses and the whole community, the nonprofits, and you put them all together in one area as a designated area to get people to come to, it really drives tourism and economic development. So if you saw the sheet that we had today that said the know before you go, there was a little spot on there that said afterwards, go to the following restaurants that are you right, know in the right. area. So we want people to come here, experience it, and come back again mm -hmm. and you know support our, our local economy. So um, be, being able to have like the trustees of reservations um, yeah. site, and these beautiful historic buildings and the library and all of the businesses on Main Street, it's, it's really very collaborative. And so when we do our performances or with the art show or the art gallery, we're looking to invite not the usual suspects. We want to have different people. Um, we look within the community. There's artists outside of the community right. here today. We look for people with different abilities, people representing different cultures different ages. So last year when we had our summer concert series, the Rose Conservatory um, brought their kids over, their group in Brockton, and they did, uh, they're all little, you know, uh, probably like anywhere from five to 10 years old. And Greg Fernandez um, runs this uh, conservatory in honor of his mother, who was a music teacher. Nice. He's got a fascinating story. He should be interviewed on one of your shows. Bring him in. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll arrange that. Um, but these kids, I've been watching them for a few years now, and just the transformation in them, not just musically, but leadership and all these other things. So they came, and they brought um, drums and maracas, wow. and they went out into the audience, and they passed them out. And, you know, somebody, I'll, I'll say this, I probably shouldn't say it on TV, but... There, somebody I know, he's kind of like a cranky person. I don't really see him smile too yeah, much. Yeah. This guy had a smile from ear to ear, banging on the drums. Oh, nice. All, nice. Everybody, old people, young people, nice. everybody was, was playing the music. And it was just such a great way to kick off um, the, the show with this multicultural performance. Yeah. And we also had them perform on, on the um, last show of the nice. season. And then we had... Um, we had a number of different performers of all different kinds of genres, ages, race, uh, ability, and that was a real win for us because we really want to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. We want everybody to feel welcome, and um, we hope that it spurs more creativity mm -hmm. uh, amongst the, the participants and the community. Well, I, in conversation with the artists, we have um, one from India. Yeah. She has some beautiful work. Right. And um, she brings her culture to the art show, yep. and she was explaining that her art is typical of what you would see in a home in India. Um, so if, if anyone is of that culture, you can come down here and buy a piece of that art. It's a piece of home. Right. So it's great. And there's other people from other, I met uh, Simone from uh, Northern England. Yes, and uh, her work is beautiful. <laughs> and it, it's all um, 
pictures of people. But it's like impressionistic. Right. And, and it's from the photographer's brother that's next to her from Miami. <laughs> and it's like this whole thing took place between these two tables while I was out there of connection yep. of photography, family, and, and pictures. Yep. And so it was, it was really cool. So we've got a lot of stuff coming together here. Yes. Yep. Yeah. A lot of good cultures. I know. I yeah. know. It's, it's great. It's great. Well, I better get back down there. They're probably looking for me. Okay. Well, it was nice talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Great. being here. I just wanted to mention one thing before you leave. Um, we, you mentioned Carol and Cole. Yes. Well, I, I met with Kevin um, this past week to talk about his dad, and he brought that name up. He, I guess they were two peas in a pod. They were. Yeah. Double trouble. Double trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's, 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 it's great to have the. And it's interesting because... Um, I, I don't want to get too deep into, uh, but what would what would Easton be like if we didn't have them? I think about things like that all the time. And when we're doing things um, that some people might not, you know, be on board with some of the changes in the town, I think of, you know, for Ames Shovel Works, for instance, some people at the time weren't really supportive of that housing, but if we didn't have the shovel works, we wouldn't have the sewer to bring to the downtown. We wouldn't have those restaurants. We wouldn't have the apartments that have gone in there. Like yeah. this whole area wouldn't have transformed. So I think of like things that we've done. What if we didn't do that? What would what would it look like? And right. you know, if Carolyn hadn't been, Carolyn was very stubborn. She was awesome, but if she had her head set on something, she would she would do it. She would you couldn't say no to her to, if she wanted you to volunteer for something. Mm -hmm. And she got things done and she she was a workhorse. I mean, she had so many events and the tea party and you name it. And yeah. uh, she just she was so passionate about it. And uh, I, I miss her terribly. I still have the last text she ever sent me. Uh, on my phone, and I save yeah. it and look at it often because I feel her around me. I was with Kevin, and he was just going down the list of things. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, the contributions. Yeah. Either in time or money, whatever it was, yeah. and and you know, it, anybody can give money, but it's bringing people together to get more, right. so that bigger things can be done. And the same with Lee. They call him the chief recruiter for the Lions Club. So, yeah. you know, anybody that knows Lee has been asked to join the Lions Club. So I will put that out there for people who are watching today. Yeah. If you want to join the Lions Club, yeah. we will have... Uh, we well, he was co-founder of the thr uh, thrift store. Yep. And I, I, I've got a whole laundry list of stuff. <laughs> He's saying wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're getting we'll, kicked off. We'll, we'll get in the laundry list later. <laughs> All well, right, thank well, you very much. It's great seeing you. Thank you. All right, take care. Hi, Mark. Thanks for joining me. Sure, my yes. pleasure. You are a legend in town. Oh, I don't know about a legend. That'll make me even no, older no, than no, I am. No, 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 you're yeah. wonderful. You're wonderful. No, no, no. You, you, I hear so much. I hear oh, so, so much well, great things. I hope it's good. Priscilla, how you cook all these things for different functions, and your. I like to cook. I like to do that stuff. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to cook? Uh, Italian. Ah, I uh, I grew up in this area, not in Easton. I grew up in Brockton, uh -huh. and my husband and I lived in New York City for 25 years. Nice. And I was surrounded by Italian people, and I learned to cook. Ah. Irish girl who cooks Italian, and I love it. I love to cook. That's great. So I used to own a pizza restaurant. Oh. Yeah, and I used to throw pizza in the air. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. New York style. Well, New York. I wish I could find New York style around here. Yeah, we let it nice go in 2004. Crust. 2006, oh. yeah. 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 Love that. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Mm. So talk to me. You are a part of this celebration. I'm a part of this celebration. Um, I am the vice chair of the Eastern Shoveltown Cultural District, and we're sponsoring today's yeah. art show. So I've been, I've been on that committee for coming up on three years. Enjoy it very much. And uh, what else? I work at Oak Sames Hall here in town. I rent the building. I'm okay. the rental agent. Okay. 
and uh, I want to tell you about a couple of concerts we have coming up at the hall. If I can jump into absolutely, that, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. April the twenty seventh, we have local talent Jake and Jenny. Oh, and we know them. They yes. were at the they're at the end brewery, of summer. and they were at the end of summer. They're fabulous, they're incredible, and they have some friends, two other bands who will be performing. That's April twenty seventh at the hall. Doors open at I believe seven p.m. You can go on our site, oaksameshall.org, okay. to and buy they're gonna be tickets. Inside. They're going to be inside, upstairs, in the beautiful Great Hall. The acoustics are fabulous. Yeah. And the best part is the ticket is $20. Nice. With, with that ticket, though, you get charcuterie, you get fresh shrimp cocktail, you get home-baked goods, you get mini quiches. Are you doing any of that? I'm doing all of it. Wow. <laughs> but what, what I'm trying to get across, I'm not trying to uh, get any applause for myself, but for $20, you come, you eat, you get music. Shoveltown well, Brewery you will be there. More. Well, it, this one is a local one, and we <laughs> want to promote it. We want to pack the hall, and we're so happy to do it with Jake and Jenny. And they write some of their own music. They write a lot of their own music, and they're in Boston. They're on the Boston yeah. stations now. They're doing great. And they so. live in town. Yep, they live in town, so I'd love everybody to come They're strong out. strong con contributors to the town. Yeah, they are. They're and wonderful. Just in their art. They are. And you know, it's interesting because that's music, and we're here with art. And we're here with art. And then I want to tell you about May 11th, and that is World Premiere Band, which is total different type of music, but the minute they start playing, everybody's going to be up dancing the entire night. Where's that? Uh, that's going to be at the hall, May 11th, world premiere band, and that is a $45 ticket. They're okay. a really premium band, and again, we will have food included with the ticket price. Um, $45, $55 at the door. You can buy a table of 10 for $400. Nice. Guaranteed to be a wonderful night. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's what's coming up before the summer events. Right, and then we'll go into... Um, our summer concert series. Yeah. We'll have six concerts, three in July, three in August, and then September the 22nd, we will have a big finale, close like the streets, last year. Yeah. have food trucks, and do a whole bunch of good things. I, I, last year, I remember just the whole center, that whole yeah. area in front of the hall by the rockery, they closed it off, and there had to have been thousand people. Oh yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. It yeah. was wonderful. So we'd like to get the merchants involved, have the music, have the food. And it's it's a wonderful day. And everybody cross their fingers that we have good weather. We did last year. It was great. And this summer every concert we had great weather. Yeah. So hope you know, we have it again. I don't think people realize um, the where where those concerts were coming from. I think they were always just like summer concerts. I mean yeah. I grew up in your neighborhood, yep. right? I was born across the street yep. on Reynolds Street. Okay. And uh, on the second floor, and that's yep. where my bedroom was as yep. an infant. And then I just moved three houses down. Oh, so And funny. I lived my whole life there. And then my I live still live in town. My children live in town. My grandchildren live in town. That's so, great. So it, it, that's it's a, great a wonderful legacy. place. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I, I still... I still feel that people don't stop long enough to realize the work and effort that goes be behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, And getting yeah. all this stuff done. Sure. And the work that volunteers like yourself. And That's why, I mean, it's, we have wonderful, wonderful volunteers for that, for Shoveltown today. And that's what makes these things happen. You know, yeah. we need volunteers. We're always looking for volunteers at Oak Sam's Hall. Come help us with the concerts. Come and yeah. see what happens behind the scenes in that beautiful building. And they can add layers to the volunteers, which mm -hmm. is nice. So you can bring new ideas in. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when I was a kid, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, Aldo and Emily Johnson. I will tell you the truth. I know that name from my husband. He grew up in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I didn't. And when we first moved there or moved back from New York City, everybody was Swedish. They called okay. it Sweetville. Yeah. It was Johnson. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of all the names. Lundgren, obviously. I think my parents crushed, uh, crashed the neighborhood. They with crashed Cardoza. the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> and now, yeah, now there's there's not too many Swedes left in the so, neighborhood. Aldo, Aldo Johnson, Mr. Johnson, was the president of Northeastern Savings Bank. Okay, okay. When it was at the uh, 
where the rockery is across yes. the street. Okay, I know what you mean. The yes. bank was on one side and the post office yes. was on the other. And and Mrs. Johnson was um, an assistant to Mrs. Ames. Okay. So which was kind of a cool thing. Yeah. And um, they were they were just always in contributing to the town and they yep. were always but I just remember them being there and uh, having so much effort in the town. It was always something to, to watch and follow. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. Really, it's kind of cool. So if anybody out there is listening and would like to volunteer either for the Eastern Shoveltown Cultural District that's putting on today's yeah. event or Oak Sames Hall, give me a call, 508-692-8060. 508-692-8060. And call that number if you want to rent the hall. Yeah, you know what we used to do at the hall when I was what? a kid? Al, Mrs. Johnson asked us, my brothers and I, they used to have an antique show. Oh, how nice. And they would, antique, would, antique dealers would come in from all over the state. And we would, my brothers and I, we were like 10, 12 years old. We would help the antique dealers bring their furniture in, bring their, their oh, that's, stuff in. Oh, that's so fun. And help so them fun. set it up. And uh, yeah, so it, this it may not have been a cultural district thing yep. back then. It wasn't. It didn't Labeled have that, that name, but it was the same right. thing. Right, it was something similar yep. to that, yeah. And then next year we have the tricentennial, Easton's 300. I'm on the uh, committee appointed by the town yeah. for that. And That's we're going to have, oh, we're going to have so many wonderful events. Yeah. We're going to kick it off January 4th at Stonehill, and we're going to have a beer garden, great day, tons of things for the kids. Not the beer garden, that's not for the kids. Yeah. And then we're going to end it on December 27th of 2025 with a gala also at Stonehill. So in yeah. between, it's going to be packed with all kinds of great things. Remember my number. You can volunteer for that. We need yeah. lots of volunteers yeah, for the I've, Tricentennial. I've watched some of the committee on ECAT. Yeah, it's uh, fabulous. They cover the committees and uh, a lot of work. A lot yeah, of we're going to do a lot of things. The, the, the level of logos and the... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that's it's so wonderful. Cool. It's wonderful how that was it's all so done. It's so cool. But I appreciate you taking the time to talk well, to thanks me. Thanks to talk for talking. Sure, to me. sure. It's great. All right, great. Someone now, from the old neighborhood. Yeah, from the old neighborhood. So let's go enjoy the show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Mark. You. I appreciate Have it. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Thank you. Bye -bye. <laughs> Hey, I have Kevin Williams with me, the son of the late Avery Lee Williams, known as Lee Williams. And uh, Kevin, this is a great tribute to your dad. Yes, yes it is. And, and this, is, this is something that he it would be right up his alley. Dad was out every night of the week and he was always at something happening in Easton. Um, and so uh, he loved a great party. You told me that the other day. And so this is exactly up uh, what he would be looking forward to. He, well, he liked community. He liked people. Yes, yes. And he'd be hugging people and talking to them and telling them a poem or a, 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 a toast or whatever it was that came into his mind. He was pretty live wire. Ah, he was amazing. So we met the other day just to have a little yes. pre-interview just so we had our act together. And uh, you mentioned his thing in the center of town that he was wondering what he's going to do next to top it. Yes, yes. Talk to me. So uh, back in 2015, he, he donated the clock to the town uh, through the Eastern Historical Society. That he made big it, clock. The clock with the, the shovel hands. And there's quite a story there. Uh, Bill Ames and, uh, came by our office uh, and, and uh, it was one winter morning and we were going to visit the clock factory. And we said, Bill, come with us. Okay, I'll go with you. I got nothing going on. So we went up there and we just, when we saw what they were doing over in, I think it's Medford, M Milford, um, we said, we got to get one of these for the town of Easton. Yeah. I mean, we got such a nice town here and we don't, we don't have a clock. Stoughton has a clock downtown, but Easton doesn't. So we have to have one. We have to have one. And that's when it was hatched. And we said, I'm going to put one of these downtown if the town will let us. And, and yeah. of course, with the historical society's help, um, and the, the, uh, the town administrator, we, it, it happened. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and it looks beautiful to it this does. day. It yeah. does. It, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a place where people look at it and they, they go by the clock, and across the street from the clock is 
this restaurant. Oh yeah, yeah. fine dining downtown. Yeah. Downtown's really come a long way. Oh, hasn't it? Terrific. What progress? Yeah, excellent. We've excellent. got the farmer's daughter. We have a casino. We have. Yep. It's just it's very it's just, sharp. It's just going nice. Yep. And the lighting at nighttime. The lighting, yeah. Oh yeah. We've we really come a long way. Yeah, and there's lighting at, at the uh, Historical Society now, yeah. too. It looks pretty yeah. good there. The Oaks Ames Hall. Yeah. Yes, it's yes. Great. So other things, I, I, the laundry use is crazy, Yeah. right? It's the JCs. Yes, in his early years, he started out in the JCs. Yeah. He was always giving back to the community and getting a group of volunteers together and motivating the volunteers to, uh, let's do something for uh, uh, this other charity in town or this person that's laid up or yeah. down on their luck. Uh, or the town itself. He was a multi-year class reunion organizer. Yes, yes, he used to do that also. Um, you know, as the as the class reunions get smaller and smaller, as people get older yeah. and older, uh, you, you tend to combine them and talk about, hey, how's your brother? How's your sister? Yeah. They were in my class. And uh, so he was the organizer for that because he was pr pretty good with technology for a fellow of his age. Yeah. yeah he passed at 86, but... He could do the email blast and all that stuff. Yeah. He was very proud of it. It's all about what you put your mind to. Right, right. Yeah. He loved it because he didn't have to pay, uh, what, 48 cents for the stamp or 56 cents for a stamp to communicate it. Yeah. yeah. Email's free? Oh, well, let's sign it, it, me up. Interesting you say that because you told me that he's a very generous guy. He liked to party. He, he, when he passed away, you said to he told you just to open up the checkbook, yes. and have a good time, have a good party on me. You know, it, 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 it's and you had a great reception for him on a Sunday. So pe he was always thinking of other people. Yes, yes, so, and but he was a bit parsimonious. You're you're uh -huh. absolutely right. He grew up uh, from, uh, raised by depression folks, and so he always watched the nickels, and he never you know waste not want not was one of his mottos, and so he was the guy bringing the cans back. But uh, but when it came to a good time and there was time to spend some money, he didn't he didn't mind spending. He enjoyed it. it. Yeah. And I remember we talked about the John Ames campaign. Yes. Back yes. in the 1970s. Right. Right. And uh, I happened to be part of that campaign as a little 10 year old handing out flyers in neighborhoods. Yes. So it was kind of cool. I didn't right. know your dad, but it's kind of cool to. Uh, yeah. In the 70s, he he was good friends with John S. Ames the third, who just recently passed and. Uh, and he was running for state rep, yeah. and uh, and of course my father was a he was quite a hustler as you can tell, and so he, they got together and John let me run your campaign, and they had so much fun with it, and it was just like another JC project yeah. for them, and and he got elected. I think he did two terms, so yeah, um, yeah that was another chapter. So all this going on, he had time to work, yes, and he had the time to. Take care of his gardens. He liked gardening. Yeah, yeah. He was in a 4-H leader at the okay. same time. Yeah. And he traveled. Uh, that was later on. Yes, he did. And yep. he had a beach house in Plymouth. Yep, down. Yep, at Saquish. My God. Yeah. He, well, he was type A, um, as he would he, he would uh, say more than once. You know, if I were a kid nowadays, I would definitely have been diagnosed with ADD. Um, but you know, a, folks with ADD, they get a lot done if they're if they're focused. I if someone that, focused them. I get that feeling. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if someone's on you all the time, now we're going to do this. It's now we're doing this. You know now that, we're right? Doing this. <laughs> well, I would just consider uh, getting fired up. I don't know. If you fire it up, you fire it up. ADD, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's a gray area. Got to have at least four balls in the air. Right, right. right. Be or juggling. Just keep it interesting. Yeah, he's an auctioneer. He's an auctioneer, and he would auctioneer all around town uh, at different charities, and all his friends and. Uh, they'd, they'd come up to him now and then and say, listen, listen, the Covenant Congregational Church is going to do a such and such and I need you to auction it for me. Or the temple or whatever it was. Uh, NRT is doing a, an art auction or whatever. And, uh, and he would gladly do that. Can you do it? Uh, oh, no, it no, I it. wouldn't <laughs> even. I think that, but he would practice his role and he had a very nice. good role for an amateur. He nice. Had an excellent role. Nice. Yeah. So we need to find an, an auctioneer. Well, yeah, the big shoes to fill. That's what I. <laughs> Real thing. And as with this interview, Mark, I mean, uh, having a father like this is very big shoes to fill. Yeah. Um, you just, but everyone has their own path. Yeah, and he, he was one of the co-founders for the thrift store. Yes. On 138. Yes. For the Lions Club. Yes. Yep. He he. As you can guess, he his mind was going all the time, and he loved loved civic organizations, and so he saw the. Uh, the uh, Lions Thrift Store down in Bonita Springs, Florida. And he said, boy, oh boy, these folks are making money out of other people's junk. 
we're getting one more use out of things. This is this is a Yankee's delight. Yeah. So bring us all your stuff that you're gonna throw out otherwise, and uh, and we'll get another use out of it, and we'll raise some money for charity. Win, 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 win. Nice. All, and it's still winning to the to this yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, People talk about it all the time. I mean, all the time. Yeah. yeah. I was with Penny, uh, Penny, as you put it. Sure, sure. You know, uh, Priscilla Arnquist Olson, and she was talking about it yesterday. Yeah. It, it, it's part of what makes Easton special. It's part of the fabric of the community. Yeah. And there's just so many things in the fabric of Easton's community that 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 uh, just make us rise above. You know, there are great towns out there, the Bridgewaters and Stoughton and uh, and many others, but you know, Easton's pretty special. They, I, yep. I agree. Yep. I'm not saying anything bad about the other towns, but Houston's <laughs> pretty special. <laughs> Good to have them around. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Sure, it's my pleasure. I know pleasure. we have family out there, and we're going to be doing the tribute pretty soon. Yes, and yes. And Dad's favorite was Robert Black, uh, Elvis Presley extraordinaire. Yeah. He is excellent. And he's in the house. He is in the house today. And he's going to perform. So he would be so happy to be... Uh, sponsoring and, and 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 being at the top of the bill with an Elvis Presley performance. That's nice. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Anything else you want to tell us? Uh, no, I, I I'm just looking forward to uh, to the show. Yeah. So uh, will it should. will it be filmed? Uh, I'm some assuming. Of it? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Yes, so definitely. maybe some of the folks can and see. And I think it. I'm going to be interviewing Elvis. Or well, Bob, all right. Bob, or Robert. Yeah. Robert Black. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have him on my phone as Elvis. I mean, how often can you pull up your phone and say, "Look, I got to call Elvis." And, get, and see if I can get him in here. You know, uh, it's a cheap, yeah. cheap thrill of mine. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people can say that. <laughs> I, I think that's about it. I'm All right. looking forward to, you know, sharing in the champagne toast. Yes, yes. And that'll be fun. Excellent. And uh, having some more good time out there. Okay. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. My pleasure. Appreciate it. All righty. Renee here. <laughs> Funny story. She's out. In, if you're in the studio here, there's a big window and people are able to come in and see what's going on in the studio. Uh, it's important that people see ECAT for what, it's, what it is and how the studio is. It's a compound studio. It's beautiful. We have teleprompters. We have all kinds of equipment, right? We had a yeah. robo camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of cool, right? It is so cool. So she's standing outside, so I waved her in. So Renee, you're you're from Easton. You I am from Easton. Easton. I live in Easton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Near the Foundry Street area. Yeah, Foundry Street area, which is underwater right now. Pretty much most of the town is. But yeah, yeah so we, we live over uh, in that area. Been there since 2008. Ah, nice. Yeah. What do you think of Easton? Uh, I think Easton has a historical charm that just makes me want to walk around the streets and pretend that I'm not in Easton or in a town and I'm somewhere else at some other time. It's just yeah. really nice. So what about the art show here? What do you think? Uh, so I, uh, I dragged my whole family with us. Yeah. I say dragged because, you know. Uh, yeah, teenage. Yeah, teenage. Yeah, one who's out there who's, yeah. you know, what are we doing? Going, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just get a chance to, I saw it, you know, online and um, saw some things around town. And what better way to just spend a random Saturday after, you know, softball and stuff to just go and see what we have for talent in town. Yeah, and we've got Elvis Presley. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting his things already. Did <laughs> Downstairs, you? Downstairs, I did, yeah. Oh, wow, does yeah. he look like Elvis Presley? He does, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does he sound like Elvis Presley? Yeah, uh, I, I'm i sure he does. Yeah, yeah he looks wait. He looks like he does, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, what do you think of these? <laughs> uh, I, They're adorable. Aren't they cute? Yeah, they're adorable. So, so if I play this game with you, <laughs> All right, so don't they look like twins? They do. They're they twins. do. They do. They look like twins. <laughs> can I have that one? You can. See this one? <laughs> this looks like, um, whoops. Hi, Kevin. Would you like me to send Robert up? Robert Black? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. We're going to see Elvis in a minute. Elvis is coming to us. Yes. Awesome. Thank yes. you. <laughs> so this is um, a, another one. So these look like twins, don't they? Mm -hmm. So we're, this is the new ECAT e mascot. Okay. So we're going to be naming it, um, and they're they're available here today at the ECAT yeah. um, table. So it's really cool. Yeah. So what do you think if I shuffled these around? 
took the bows off them and shuffled them around, would you be able to tell which one's which? Uh, I could look at them for a little bit longer right now and see if I can find a way to tell. <laughs> yeah, I think right? I could tell, yeah. But if you look yeah. at these two, you can tell a distinct Very difference, different. right? Yes, yes, so, yes. So it's interesting. So these, these little stuffed animals, yeah. they all have their own little character and signature. Yeah. It was kind of neat. So what do you do for fun? Oh, uh, I, I, I eat out for fun. Oh. <laughs> we go out to eat a lot. Where's your favorite restaurant? Uh, I am a Leandro's lover. Yeah, so Leandro's on for me. I'm 138. I'm 138. The chicken piccata is my favorite Okay, dish, so. I, I, I like the eggplant there. I'm a big uh, fan of the yes, eggplant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we spend a lot of time doing that. Kids keep us busy with sports and stuff, so it's more... You know, uh, just not having to cook dinner at home. So that's so what we look forward you, you've to. You've been here since 2008? 2008. Where from where? Bridgewater. Okay. Yeah. Which Bridgewater? Just Bridgewater? Just Bridgewater. Nice. One exit down. Nice. Yep. Nice. The kids enjoying town? Yeah. Yeah. They love it. Uh, they, yeah, school's amazing. They have their, yes, they love it. They yeah. don't want to ever leave. What so. grades? Uh, we have a 12 year old who's in seventh, and then my son is um, nine and he's in third. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So he's going to probably be part of the naming of the cat. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, Name yes, cat. yes. Yep. Yeah, he's Name over at RO uh, yep. for school. He just missed getting into, you know, the new Bland James. He spent a half a year there, yep. but now he's yep. over at RO. Yep. Yeah. Nice school systems. Yes, yes. And I'm not saying that I've born and raised in Easton <laughs> and my kids are here, but we're yep. really proud of our school system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the recent uh, Shrek musical too, I bring the kids to those. Crazy, you know, it's just right? nice to have like I yeah. said, look at you you go to these schools. So yeah. I haven't seen a musical in Easton. I haven't seen a bad musical in Easton yet. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Ever. <laughs> the talent, the training, the, mm -hmm. the music program, the yeah. I mean, um, I remember my son thanking me one day for allowing him to grow up in Easton. Yeah, just for that, yeah. <laughs> and the scenery and just everything is just so beautiful. You don't have to go all the way in the city and you don't yeah. have to go all the way, you know. If I want to go for a walk somewhere nice, you just come downtown and, yeah. you know, the uh, Ames Estate across the street is where I spend a lot of my time. All right. Uh, going Elvis. for walks, yeah. Elvis, Elvis. is the room. <laughs> Elvis, thank you for joining you? us. Good, how are you? I'm here with Robert Black. Known as the Elvis Presley impersonator. Tribute artist. Was that? Tribute, Tribute artist. Artist. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. There's Incredible. a little difference between Elvis impersonators and tribute artists. What's the artist. difference? Tell me. Well, the best way to describe it is like if you're an Elvis impersonator, you're supposed to be an exact duplicate. Okay. Okay. Uh, which falls into the like Elvis lookalike thing. You're yeah. supposed to be six feet. Yeah. 170 pounds. Elvis died at 42. I got him beat. So, uh, and then there's the tribute artist world yeah. where we do their music, we pay tribute to their music, and um, you could be five feet yeah. and 300 pounds, you could be six foot seven and 200 pounds, you know, so okay. they, they don't look at it that way. But the impersonator thing is what the public automatically says, yeah. like I'm having a party, yeah. we got to get an Elvis guy. I'll Google that, yep. Elvis impersonator. Yep. So I kind of go with it, but when I have an opportunity to at least describe it a little bit, you I You define do. it. I try to. That's good, I'm glad. I try to, thank you. I'm glad you. you told me that because yeah. it's, it's important to know. Exactly. Yeah, so I had a meeting with Kevin in okay. the office the other day. Yeah. And he mentioned that the day his father died, mm -hmm. he called you. He did. You were close to Kevin. And, oh, they're like family. And, um, and Lee yes. loved watching you perform. Yeah. And he had his ceremony on mm -hmm. a Sunday over here at the Quisit House. That's correct. And you dropped everything. Yeah. Dropped everything to be there. I did. Um, it, it's funny because Kevin actually found me yeah. online. And it was his mom's, I want to say, 80th birthday. When yeah. you do so many of these things, you forget a little bit. But I think his mom was turning 80 at the time. So I went out to this place that they had the... The house, which was very, I didn't know it was Psequish. Uh, in Plymouth. In Plymouth. Yep. And you got to go down this road that takes about 40 minutes with potholes and, yep. and this plover. Yep. And if the plover walk, you got to wait until they, if it takes 10 minutes or it takes 10 hours, right. you got to go. So I went there and I met um, Lee, I met his wife, I met the whole family, and they were just unbelievable people. I mean, some of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet. And we just, you know, 
hit it off. They were like family. And Kev would bring me out every summer. It would be like something the Williams would really look forward to. Nice. And um, my biggest memory of Lee was the garden. He had a garden mm -hmm. in the backyard. And he loved the garden. Uh, he would, if, if you met him and you wanted to talk shop about it, he would fall in love with you and talk about it. So my wife actually had planted her first garden one of the years that we were out there. So she was admiring his different vegetation, you know, tomatoes yeah. and whatnot. So she struck up a conversation with Lee and, oh my God, that was it. They talked about gardens, I think, for two hours. I couldn't get her out, nice. you know? And he gave her really great tips and, and yeah. really great advice. And that's what I remember Lee the most, this was the gardening and- That was him. Of course, the dancing. And the singing. That man just loved to yeah. dance and sing. Yeah. He liked to celebrate life. You know, he was a wonderful, wonderful gentleman. And I felt really bad when Kevin had contacted me and, you know, told me the news. Yeah. Um, I felt bad. And when he asked me if I would come out and do a celebration of life for him, it worked out um, perfectly. Yeah. You know, the time frame. I'm glad yeah. I, was, I was in the area. I wasn't yeah. traveling or yeah. anything. And it worked out, worked out perfect. He said that there's two songs that you sing that bring him to tears. Oh, wow. Lee or Kevin? I don't know. <laughs> one of them. Well, you in, know which one? They've, got, um, they've got a few that they really, really like. But I know one of the biggest ones that they used to always get welled up with would be, it's a gossip one yeah. that Elvis loved to sing, How Great Thou Art. I think that, yeah. And they would ask me to sing that all the time, and, and I would sing it, and they'd get teary-eyed. And I mean, most people do. You got to sing that and, here? And, well, I really don't have an agenda today. Oh. I'm kind of playing it by, because it's not really like a concert. I'm more just part of the, part of the, the group, and I want to keep the volume to a point where people can still converse at the tables. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but you, know, you never know. We could maybe put that, and we'll see how it goes. Can you belt it out right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> it's kind of weird doing, okay. doing that. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Well, that's but okay. um, I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah. If you uh, if you give me some contact information before I leave, an email or yeah. something like that, I'll send you a uh, a clip of it. Oh, you're you're great. And I, you. well, we try to yeah. make people happy. What's your favorite song to sing? You know, I, I'm a I'm a joker. I love doing comedy. I find I like hitting people's souls with music, but I also like making people laugh. Yeah. And when they always ask me, what's your favorite Elvis song? I always tell them the last one so I can go home. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a joke, but it's hard because the man had um, an extensive library. Yeah. I mean, the songbook, there's like 843 songs. And though the average person doesn't know, um, someone's given us a two. Oh, two minutes. Okay. Even though everybody um, doesn't know every single song, yeah. they know quite the majority of them. Do you get stopped a lot in the street? Um, all the time. People want to take a picture. Yeah. People want to... Sometimes people just want to chat. They're, they're intrigued. Like, this guy can't be real. Like, he doesn't look like this. <laughs> he, I mean, he must, real hair. He I mean, must be a singer. I mean, he must be a singer. He must be an yeah. entertainer. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. can't, you know. So yeah, some more so uh, more so out of curiosity sometimes yeah. then, but um, it's a great job. It's wonderful. I mean, it's a wonderful job. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Well, I'm great to be here, man. Yeah, Thank you so it's much. It's so cool. It is cool. You know, and we've got it's champagne, cool. and we've got cake, we have food and music, we have art and music. What? We're not missing anything, brother. Yeah. We got all the bases covered. We do, and it's a rainy day, so it's a good place to come and yeah, chill out. Yeah, it's not that nice up here today. A little yeah, windy, a little like chilly. Out. Yeah, it's raw. We're, we're in the right place. Yeah, we're in the right yeah, place. Great. You just saw Elvis. He's uh, Robert Block. He's going to be singing Elvis songs shortly. Uh, we have a champagne toast coming up uh, for Lee Williams. Um, we have cake in celebration of Lee Williams. Um, so it's it's a lot of great stuff going down here, um, and it's 58 Oliver Street. If you're just tuning in, um, we've got artists over 24 artists down there from different cultures, and um, it's just it's just nice to see what's going on. And don't be afraid to come to the back of the studio. And like I, we just flagged down Renee. She was looking in through the window, and she came in, and we were able to chat and learned a little about her life and her children and. 
it's just a great place. Um, come down and just to talk about uh, Lee Williams a little bit. Um, as Kevin, his son, mentioned, they have a foundation, which was a trust before, now it's a foundation. And they're going to be doing a lot of stuff in the coming year um, to extend his legacy with Easton, which is wonderful. And Lee uh, enjoyed a good, um, good time. He was a social butterfly. He loved entertaining. He loved singing. He loved dancing. Uh, he's a um, large part of why we have that clock on Main Street across from the farmer's daughter. Um, and he had a beautiful, he, has, he had a beautiful home in an island off of our peninsula, off of Plymouth, and uh, where he had his garden, did a lot of traveling. He was responsible, one of the co-founders and responsible uh, for the Lions Club thrift store. So I know a lot of people that uh, like to frequent the thrift store. So we can um, thank him for being part of establishing that. If you remember the JCs, he was part of the JCs. Um, he was also the man that at the NRT of the Lions Club that was the auctioneer. Um, that's another thing he did uh, that in town. And again, uh, another thing, he was a multi-year organizer for class reunions uh, for his class and a few others. He worked on the John S. Ames campaign, uh, which ran, he ran for a couple of years and was successful. Uh, so it's been, he's been a, um, a large contributor, so they're celebrating it down in the, um, at 50 Oliver Street. So come on down. Um, and uh, we had Dave Spacone there sing with the guitar. And Dave um, also is the guitarist that you'll see at um, the Shoveltown Brewery, which is right behind us. Uh, so you can come down here, um, see the artwork, and go snag a beer. Uh, around the corner um, and um, listen to some more music. So it's, it's a lot of things going on down here. Uh, we're right across from Governor uh, Ames Mansion on Oliver Street. Um, real cool place. Um, we've had some great artists. We have, um, we, we interviewed, uh, we interviewed Lee Tan, who uh, contributed some artwork from Easton to ECAT. Uh, we've interviewed uh, Amy, well, we haven't interviewed Amy Rodericks yet, but she's the woman that uh, is responsible for putting all this together for the town with the cultural district. Um, so she's been a, a big effort. I'm sure she's out there running around and she was yesterday afternoon and this morning putting all this together. So it's, it's been really a good time. And um, I guess it's, it's getting bigger and better as we get closer to listening to Alvers uh, sing. Just want to bring attention to these little cats you see on the table. Um, cool little stuffed animals. Um, they're Easton E Cat's new mascot. Uh, we're going to have a name contest. I believe it's going to be in the school system to help the hopefully the lower grades will um, be able to name the, the cat. Um, they're they're quite interesting. They all are a little bit different. Uh, so bring it on down and, and come on down and uh, check them out. Uh, they're a $15 donation to ECAT, um, but they're really, they're really cute. You've got some that look like twins. This one doesn't look like the same, so it's kind of interesting. You can come and pick, pick your cat, which is, which is what you want to do. So anyway, um, ECAT, let's talk about ECAT for a little bit. ECAT, Eastern Community Access Television, um, is a nonprofit. It's not supported by your Eastern tax dollars, but this is the uh, studio that... Um, we do all the remote and we do live um, uh, streaming here. And we also do recording. So if anybody has a message or a program they'd like to uh, promote um, and that has something to do with Easton or something that they do in particular, um, you check it out. Um, we're, you're welcome to come down and we have a podcast studio. We have this studio. We have remote recording. Um, it's, a, it's a great thing. We've um, I've recently started a show called Well Informed. Uh, we've, got, we've had guests in here, we've done remotes in different places. Um, so it's, it's a fun thing and they're very helpful in getting things done. So um, that's ECAT and um, we're always looking for volunteers and a uh, great place to, if you're a, in the media world or if you're at, uh, in school looking for something to, um, some background to add to your resume in reference to 
broadcasting or social marketing, uh, give us a call and come down and um, meet with us. All done? I'm getting signals here. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is, we're out. Okay, we're going to go to live toasting now. So we're going to go to remote and we're going to go to Dottie, who's going to be speaking about Avery Lee Williams, and we're having a toast. Thank you. Yep. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight to celebrate uh, our, our annual art show. I'm Dottie Fulinetti. I'm chair of the Cultural District and the Select Board, and we're glad to have you here tonight. So I want to introduce Kevin Williams. Come on up. So one of the things that we wanted to do tonight is recognize Avery Lee Williams and his wife, Betty. They were great benefactors of the arts, among other things, and his family is here tonight. Um, part of this uh, beautiful celebration was made possible by funding from the Avery Lee Williams Foundation. Did I say that right? Excellent. So we are very grateful to Lee, Betty, and the family for all the investments and all the wonderful things that they've done in Easton. So I'd like to introduce their son, um, What's your name again? <laughs> Kevin Williams. Um, he's going to say a few words about me. Oh, do you want to do this? Uh, I'm sorry, I went out of order. Um, I'm going to introduce Joan Grin, the Vice Chair of Cultural District, and she's going to present a plaque. Thank you, Frank. I have the plaque to Lee and to Betty, and they were just wonderful, wonderful. And what Dottie said is Lee did so much. He loved the arts. He was always involved whenever we did anything. I'm tall and that still. So I'm going to just take a second. I'm going to read this and then hand it over to Kevin and Holland. And I'm going to turn it so I can see it. So with gratitude, this is from the Eastern Shoveltown Cultural District to Avery Lee and Betty Williams for their lasting support of the arts, always in our hearts, the Eastern Shoveltown Cultural District, today, April 6, 2024. Let's hear it for Lee, and let's, let's all have a toast. Okay. We're all so confused. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here today. As you know, Lee loved the town of Easton, and, uh, and, and Lee loved a good party. Yes, yes he did. And so um, he can't be with us here, but I know he's watching us. Um, and uh, I know we all have a, a glass of bubbly in our hands, so I'd like to ask you to raise a glass of bubbly, and I'm going to try to do my best Lee really Williams impersonation. <laughs> Champagne for my real friends, real pain for my sham friends. <laughs> yeah. We miss you. <laughs> and, That's exactly and, what they would have said. And I, I couldn't do anything without my wonderful bride, Ha. Huh? So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, we're back. How was that Elvis? He was great. Robert Block. He's still out there playing, but we're going to talk to Nil Nilifer. Yes. And, um, she has some great artwork with us. She's one of the artists, one of the 24 artists out there. Yes. And you having fun? Absolutely. It's been a great turnout. And this is your first show. Yes. And you've been doing this for how long? Uh, this is my third year. So, so here it is. Here's her art. Ready? 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 Yes. Here it goes. This is one piece. <laughs> yes. So this, is, uh, this art form is called Lipan. And uh, this is one of my 22 inch pieces. So typically Lipan is um, an art form from India. Uh, it's a mural kind of art form. I'll hold it while you talk, how's that? Okay. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> Thank you. Not a problem. So um, there's a village in India where they embellish the outsides of their homes using clay and cut mirrors. So the same idea is used for these pieces, but I work on a wood base, and there's white here, which is the air dry clay, and then I embellish with cut mirrors. So this is all for interior home decor, commercial spaces, I customize for size as well. Now this is just one. Um, I, if you go on our website, I, I was on your website this week, yes. and you have a yin and a yang. Yes. And I said to her over the phone, I said, 
I love the yin and yang, you started laughing <laughs> because you don't have one anymore because they're no. so popular. Yes, I delivered just two last week. So <laughs> yeah, and this one here is white, but if you see the others um, in the in your in your table, there's blue, there's orange, there's yellows, there's all kinds of colors. Yes. So in in a house, you have any any type of color you could add this to a wall, yes. and it's just going to pull it right out. I do have clients who send me pictures of their home decor. They'll send me pictures of their cushions, their curtains, their furniture, their walls, and then they'll tell me what dimensions they want. And if they want me to incorporate those colors into the piece, then I can do that, yeah. So go a little deeper in what Lipan is in your native country, India. Uh, so Lipan comes from Kutch, which is on the west coast of India. And uh, the people in this village use camel dung and clay soil to make a kind of clay mix. And then they make these decorations on the outside of their huts, the exterior and interior walls. And then they stick these mirror pieces on. Uh, they believe that the mirror reflects any negative energy away from their home. Uh, but it also embellishes, makes their homes look pretty. Well, not only is this great, but if, if I were from India and I wanted a taste of home, I would want one of these in my house. Oh, wonderful. It's good to hear right? that. Because yes. it's home. Yes, it is. Right. It is. And not only that, but go ahead. Uh, my designs are very different from the traditional designs of India because they, uh, over the last few years that I've been selling Indian folk art, uh, I have learned that the art needs to be tweaked for Western home decor. So if you go online and you look at Lipan art, you'll see the designs are very different. The colors are more vibrant. One piece may have four different kinds of colors, which may not necessarily be something that would suit home decor here. So my designs are very different. They're unique um, compared to traditional Lipan designs. Yeah. Yes. What's interesting is it's art, but has a purpose. Yes. What's your purpose? So uh, I use my art to be able to speak to people about culture, to create that space, that, that safe space to discuss uh, where I come from, if there are questions to be asked, especially when I conduct workshops. I love to conduct workshops for children and adults. And that's when, when you're in that creative process, there is this very safe zone that's created. And uh, they ask me questions, I answer them. Sometimes we... Um, religion comes into the picture, they ask me what religion I am and you know if they have questions. And I think the more we discuss these things in a safe space, the more you know the, the walls come down yeah. and there's a familiarity and the, there's a sense of friendship. Right. So what's so, interesting about this art show yes. is from the cultural district. Absolutely. So we have mu mu many cultures out there. Yes. And, and they're all displaying their art from sometimes their native countries or sometimes their heritage. Yes. Um, which is which is wonderful. You do important work here. I think it's important that we display cultures so that we don't lose them, and you know we have more eyes on what what else is out there in the world. It's interesting because we we go to a lot of restaurants. Yes. That feature their culture. Yes. It may some of it may have been Americanized, but it's featuring their culture, yes. and um, this is art that's doing the same thing. <laughs> it is. It it's is really cool. What else do you want to tell us? Um, well, um, do you have any questions in mind? I think, uh, if, well, I don't have any questions, but I think you're, I have, I have comments. I think your, your artwork is incredible. At first, when I first looked at him, I thought you were painting on mirror. Oh. And then the more I look at it, it's not paint on mirror. No, it's not. It's cut mirrors. It's, yeah. It's but... pieces of mirror cut. Yes. And how do you do that? So that I get them largely pre-cut. Yeah. Because of the bulk of work that I do, but the art form also, um, the material is available in India. Mm -hmm. And then I sometimes cut the pieces to make them fit my, my designs. Yeah. So for that, you have glass cutters. Okay. Yes. So do you, do you find that um, you do most of your work um, in the late hours, the early hour? When are you inspired? So I have children, which does not allow me to work when I'm inspired. It allows me to work when I have them out of the house or you know, yeah. away from my studio space. So I typically work from about 10 in the morning to about 2 in the afternoon yeah. before I need to go home and tend to them. And I've asked all the artists out there, and it's, it's probably the dumbest question the person can ask an artist, 
it's it's what's your favorite piece and they go oh no yeah I that's can't a do that. that's a tough this, one they're all my favorite which i hope they are and yeah. that's that's a great thing but uh, this one does bring close to my heart because uh, i think white is such a pure color yeah there's no room to hide mistakes <laughs> and uh, you can never go wrong with white rust uh, silver and gold i think this piece would look good in any space anywhere yes yeah, in any home i she asked me which one she should bring and I said the blue one because that's my yes. color. He and liked a blue one with the Buddha and it has these mandala dots on it, but it does not have the clay. And so I thought it would not be the best piece to show today because yeah. I can't show you the clay work. And the orange one is incredible too. Yes. It looks like a glowing sun. Yes. We could have got that one too. Yeah, yeah. that's exciting too. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, this is great. Yes. So how does someone get in touch with you? So um, I have, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook and I have my own website. And I would like to extend an invitation to anyone who'd be interested in uh, coming in for a workshop or I can bring the workshop to their spaces as a private event. So I, I know I'm interrupting you. No. One thing that was exciting, your name is Lily Water. No. Water, uh, so my name is Nilofa. Nilofa. But it translates to Water Lily. And so my studio is called the Water, Water Lily, Lily Designs. So that's cool. Yes. That's I think cool. so too. It just came to me at night in the middle of my, yeah, I was sleeping and it just came to me. Well, your subconscious brought yes. it to you and said, yes. yeah, that's when, that's when creativity happens <laughs> at night. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful when you're sleeping, whether it's during the day or <laughs> <at night. laughs> Well, I'm glad it came easily. Yeah. A beautiful piece. Thank you. Glad you shared it with us. Absolutely. And um, I know there's some other footage that we've put together showing your other pieces. Oh, wonderful. Uh, we did that um, when you weren't here. Okay. So I'm sure they'll be able to see them on, um, on the, in the process of oh, that'll watching be wonderful. this program. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And appreciate all that you do. And how are you doing out there? Are you getting a lot of feedback? Yes, or? yes. Yeah. There's a lot of curiosity about how the pieces are made yeah. and yeah, the history of the work. Yeah. So that's good. That's great. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Take care. Yes. We grabbed another artist. <laughs> Kat, you did. Cat DC. That's me. Welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much. And um, I met you earlier. You did. Yeah. Yeah. And you do some great stuff. I do. Yeah. Um, I do a little bit of pen and ink is my main yeah. piece here. Um, so I I don't know how this started, um, but I started on drum heads All actually. Right. Can I see it? Yeah, please. So let's. That's you... a, a print. Um, this is the original of it. Um, I do a lot of gallery shows, so most of these end up in galleries hanging on the wall. Um, but here today, selling some prints, um, actually for the first time. So, but yeah, detailed pen and ink. Um, these take 30 to 35 hours typically, um, not all at once. But yeah. Do you do this freehand? I do. I do. I typically wow. start outer with a ruler of some sort and then completely freehand from How there. do you hold your hand so steady? I have no idea. <laughs> The um, detail is incredible. Yeah. I don't know if I don't, I don't know if you it's can see. It's hard to in, see, I know. It's hard. It, it's it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Beautiful work. Thank you very much. How long have you been doing this? About five years now. Nice. Yeah, it was a great pandemic. The pandemic, of course, was not great, but it was a great yeah. sort of filler for when so I was stuck at home. It, it brought something out of you you didn't know you had. It did. Yeah, I work in cybersecurity day job, right? So it's a sort of different mindset. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, yeah. Cybersecurity, wow. Yes. So from this to cyber... Very different left brain, right brain. Yeah. Right. So I was looking at your your ink art down there, and yeah. some of it is a little repetitious. Yes. You'll see a lot of, I guess, the same triangles, maybe some lines here. Yeah. Um, when I find something I like, and I know I can fill in a space. Yeah. So what, what makes you think about what you're drawing? That's a really good question. Um, I sort of hope that everybody sees something a little different when they look at it. Yeah. I don't necessarily know what I see, but I'm hoping that someone looks so at it and sees. So you don't know what you see in this? Th well, this one is called Staircase. Um, so the name of this one is Staircase. Yeah. I sort of was getting, if you've seen the MC Escher staircase that sort of goes in a square around and around and around. That's yeah. what I was thinking. It's like a never ending staircase. Interesting. This reminds me of an auditorium. Yep. Yeah, like a Coliseum seating almost. Yeah. These, um, you have arrows. Yes, I do. And I, it's funny, the shape just kind of turned into an arrow, but it wasn't intentional. It never is. It just 
kind of, yeah. And then in the center, it looks like you have boats that are crisscrossing. Oh, I like that. Yeah, like canoes almost. Yeah, like a wide yep. sailboat. I was thinking sailboat because you like have a mast in the middle. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then you have benches on each side. Yep. So if you're into sailboats. And if you notice too, sometimes when I'm drawing, the lines don't match up perfectly. So this side, a little off. This ah. side, less so. So it's not like when you were in it's not school. Perfect. <laughs> Remember when you were a kid, you would take something and you'd fold it in half and you'd get a mirror yep. image. Yes. Um, it's not quite perfect. It's not that at all. No. No, it's not. It's like it's like a um, an oriental rug. Yeah. I don't know if you ever familiar with oriental rugs. A Definitely. Real, a real one, not not manufactured by a machine. Right. They're they look similar, but they're imperfect. Yeah. From side to side. Yeah. This is really cool. I get mandala a lot. That's sort of the effect that I get. What's that? Um, I think it's just the repeating intricate patterns, but uh, Buddhist maybe some okay. sort of. Uh, but I, that's what people relate to them. So is this often. It, does this relax you? Yeah, it does. So when do you do this? Late at night? Late at night. Yeah. So I work out of the Easton Art Co-op. Yeah. I'm really lucky to have a private studio there. Yeah. Um, and I can go 24/7. So I work my day job. We'll sometimes go five, six o'clock, and I'll stay until 11, midnight, so 1 a.m. So the lights on, you're there. Exactly. If the lights on. The lights on, someone is home in this case. Interesting, interesting. So when you do this, when you work your art, so if you're sitting in traffic yeah. in Boston. <laughs> Which happens yeah. often. A lot of these things might come to your mind. Yeah. Weirdly though, I, I try not to think about it beforehand. Yeah. I actually will think about maybe the outer design and something that I want in an image, but then yeah, I'll just sort of think about the you detail. You visualize it. it and you put it down exactly in ink exactly cool what else do you want to tell us that's uh that's the main gist of it i'm uh, i'm on instagram i have a website um cat dc art for anybody who's interested in checking it out um and yeah if i if i asked you to do something um that is in my head can you do that i could try i do take commissions be so, happy to give it a shot so how does that work um, you can reach out to me on my website if you'd yeah. like and sort of give me an idea. I'd love if I get an idea of some sort of like major piece and then uh, I can go from there. So what would I have to tell you? Maybe just what you're looking for. Um, How would I know that? What sort of, like are you looking for something square? Are you looking for a heart shape? Is it for someone? Oh, okay. I don't know. And then I get sort of creative license I think on the inside. So That's then, how I would so think So do you go it. into like a person's home? I could. And, I haven't before. And, or Certainly or an could. office. And they say, we want some kind of a, an ink art here. And this is kind of what we do. This is the building. Yeah. And then you would design it according to what you see yep. in that situation. Yeah, I think so. That's Never it. done it before. So, so these are all straight. Well, they're not all straight lines because you have curves here. Exactly. The majority yeah. is straight, though. The majority are straight because they're easier to create straight and they're easy to make symmetrical straight. Yep. When you curve things, it starts to get a little more difficult. Interesting. Yeah. Totally different form exactly. of art. Exactly. And it takes you out of your cybersecurity world. Precisely. Which it does, which I, yeah, I don't mind. Crazy. Very. Yeah. Every day something new. Everything's scary in this world. Well, thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. And um, hope, to, hope you do well out there. Thank How you. is it going out there? It's going all right. It's yeah. going all right. It's a a busy, busy, yeah. Yeah, we had the tribute, and that brought a lot of people in as well as normally. Yep. Um, we have a good following. Yeah. The Easton, I, I think the Easton Arts Cultural Group is a, an amazing one. I live in Attleboro, so I don't have the same resources there, but right. here and, it's been great. And Dottie was here earlier. She's yeah. part of the chair. And she was telling us how we're different and we're unique in that area. Good. That's great. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Yeah. All right. Take care. You as well. Hi. We're back with Mimi. Yes. And um, we're standing up for a reason because Mimi is wearing her art. Isn't that right? Hey, we don't know. Huh? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> no. My friend made the dress. Okay. And another one uh, made the paint on... Uh, yeah. Okay. Your and friend made the dress, but you yes, did the art. And yep. Yes. This is the one that I made. And this is yours. Yes. Wow. But uh, it's okay that my friends, they see I have a reason I'm wearing it. Yep. I'm an artist. I'm in a network of other artists and each one of us do something different and we promote each other. It's, it's about, beautiful. Yes. 
Yes. Thank you. And you did the pocketbook. Yes. And you do other work with rocks. I do rocks. Yes. Uh, the Mimi rocks, or uh, you can even find them in the Full Fuller Art Museum. The did Fuller Art Museum. Yes. Yeah, in Brockton. Yes. Uh, and uh, I do also some little magnet. And um, there is uh, I do big canvases and small canvases also. But the part that is different with my artwork, they have a lot of texture. Okay. It's, it's like I carve them on the canvas. That's and if you feel them, there's texture. Even if you were blind, you put your hand on it, you're going to feel something fantastic. Nice. So that makes people feel good. Yes. That's yes. the purpose of it. So what's your favorite thing to do with the art on your rocks? Uh, the little tree, us. The little trees. There is the tree of life. I enjoy doing those little trees. It's just like there is all those little dots of green and red and yellow and blue and purple. After a while, you know, my mind is full of colors. <laughs> oh, nice. So what's your favorite color? Blue. I can tell. Yes. Your dress is beautiful. Thank That's you. my favorite color, too. Yes. And I have two uh, male children, so I enjoy the blue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I hear you. So, um, how big are your, how big of a rock do you design? Uh, the biggest rock that I made was to go to somebody's property. It was about, okay, like the size of that, about the size of that the corner table? of the table. Yeah. Just half of it. That's the biggest rock I did. Oh, wow. Yes. You and it was in their yard or their backyard? In their backyard, and it was to, of, they talked to me and I had to find an idea or to represent them on that rock. And I had a lot of fun. Nice. Yes. So someone can call you, they have this big rock in their front yard. Yeah. And they want to do something with it. Yes. And you could create rock art. Yeah. It's because the rock, every, the rock speaks to us. So the moment that somebody or any rocks that I put in, in my hand, I don't know at first hand what I'm going to do. The rock tell me. It, yeah, <laughs> yes. no, I hear you. Yeah, the rock, yeah, I yeah, get it's it. It's just it's a strange way sure. to explain it. I, I hear you. Yes. So if the rock has this spot here that's sticking out, yes. you can design that, you can do something with that because that creates that changes it creates your creativity. something exactly, and it has a big crack down here. You play with it. That's right. the way. Uh, when they come to us like that, it's not. We didn't make the rock. We are just going to decorate it. So it is very different. Right. Yes. So everything is. Yes. Is, is wow. I I can see a real strong. Uh, you know attraction. I enjoy that. painting. Yeah. Whether it's the rocks whether it's the wearable art, whether it's the wood, the, the canvases, the walls, people's wall, or those big dividers on the street. I'm obsessed with art, I enjoy it. Nice. Yes. <laughs> so when you meet with somebody, you ask them questions about what kind of art they want on their wall? Usually they would be the one telling me. If they so they have to. it in their head already yes. what they want. Yes. And I rarely take those things, but yes, it's fun to do. Nice. Well, they call it, they commission you some work to do. Yes. Nice. So you do rock, you do plaques, you do canvas, you yes. do wood. Yes. You do walls. Yes. And fabrics. And fabric. The, yes. So. That's sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. Anything else you want to tell us? Um... I enjoy to, uh, being here today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's different uh, from the places uh, I went on before. It's very formal. <laughs> this is formal? I think it is formal. Oh, wow. You know, maybe because yeah. it's inside the way it's set up. Yeah. But it's nice, yes. So, where do you normally? Oh, we go, it's having uh, being a vendor. Uh, in certain places, it's presented differently. Well, I'm glad. Yes. Because <laughs> it's awful mm. cold to be standing mm. outside. Yes, so, yeah. 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 That's great. No, we do that for the summer. During the winter, yeah. we don't do that uh, outside, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So how do I get in touch with you if I want a rock painted in my yard? 
Okay. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people have just rocks in their yard. I don't know. Some people are crazy about the, the rocks. I can be reached uh, at 774-219-6429. Or I can uh, be reached uh, via my website, which is insideartgallery.net. Inside Art Gallery. Inside Art Gallery. Insight. Yes. In I N S I G H T. Correct. Art Insight Gallery. Art Gallery. Dot dot net. Com, dot net. Yes. And your phone number again is? 774-219-6429. Yes. That's awesome. I hope your phone is ringing off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Marcus. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. And, and thank you, sir. Enjoy the, uh, the art yes. show. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, so we're back with Amy Rodriguez. And Amy is the, the heart and soul, the meat and potatoes, yeah. of getting this thing done. Yeah. You yeah. are the... He's a, the detail person. Oh, <laughs> the crunch person. Uh, I don't know. The right, person right. that's running it's around, been... making sure every little detail happens I for have this help. event. I have help. It's a team effort. But it's a team yeah, effort. It definitely yeah, is. But, definitely but the is. buck stops with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. Uh, yeah. uh, it's been I, a lot of fun, though. We're yeah. having a great evening. Yeah. So. Well, Very it, excited for the great turnout. Great turnout, yeah, right? Yeah, really. And the artists, they're just such amazing, talented artists, diversity in, in their medium and genre. It's, it's just been really great yeah. to get to know them and what, what inspires them and you know, their techniques. And yeah, it's really been great. So, it, it's yeah. amazing how everyone's different in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, you have musicians that sing, and it's their thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have people that write, and it's their thing. It's their inspiration. And you have people that express themselves through art. Right. And we and just roaming around, there are a lot of people that didn't want to come interview. Yeah. Because right. they were afraid of the camera. Yeah. But um, the artwork is incredible. Right. When, as you said, um, a couple of days ago that art is is um, intimate that it's you know it's a lot they put in so much work and thought and idea that um, yeah you know so it's hard to talk about it sometimes yeah and, it's so hard uh, to walk away from them as well because yeah, yeah. You, you you see this artwork you know the effort that's and that you are one of the and I said this before it's like a dumb question to ask an artist which is your favorite piece yeah it, they're all their favorite piece but um, it's so hard to walk away from them knowing that the effort they put into, like, like um, we had um, Kat mm -hmm. from the art with the um, ink art. Yes, right, pen and ink. 35, right. 35 hours yeah. right. to, Amazing. to one. Yeah, such effort. If that's not a labor of love. Yes, right, you know? right, it really yeah. is, yeah. So what do you have it's to tell us? Great. Oh, well, you know, we're just really so happy. This is exactly what we wanted, to be able to promote local artists yeah. and um, showcase them and give them a platform to, you know, meet people from not only Easton but surrounding communities. So, you know, it's, it's been a wonderful evening. We look forward to doing it again. Um, and, you know, right now the Cultural District is looking forward to the summer, summer concert series. We'll have our End of Summer Music Festival again on September 22nd. So, well, I think yeah. you met your goal. Wonderful, yeah. <laughs> awesome. I think so too. Event. Yeah, thank and you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, and thank you to ECAP for your, your partnership in it. Yeah, we really appreciate a lot it. Of fun. This is a wonderful. Yes, a lot of fun, and um, just great to meet all. Yeah. We're there to support the community. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Wow, you guys have fun. Jeez. It you know? is. <laughs> yeah.